Hello! Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday smoke, and we have quite a few things to discuss, so let's get to it. First of all, the bidness on this Sunday smoke. Reviews that you will see this week, or a, a video, one review that you will see this week. Let me, let me just show you something here. Um, just try to get a full house here. Can't hold them all in one hand. Ugh. Ugh. These are all the wallets that I've reviewed on the channel. It started off with the Saddleback Front Pocket ID wallet. I believe this was one of the first videos I posted, or very early on, maybe within the first month of the channel existing. It's gotten quite a few views, at least relative to my other uh, videos on the channel. And ever since I posted this, I guess because it's gotten views, because it was Saddleback and Saddleback's kind of popular, other manufacturers have sent me wallets to review. And many of them have been quite good. In fact, one that I reviewed in the past was this. It was the Popov five card leather wallet in Horween Chrome XL. It was a cool wallet. To me, it was a little thick, maybe a little bulky for my sort of minimalist aesthetic that I like in a wallet. But Popov sent me a new version of the five card leather wallet. Where is it? Oh, it's in my pocket. I've been carrying it around with me. Ugh. Pants are kind of tight. Ah, and here it is. Now this one improves on the original version in pretty much every way. I like this one a lot. I know we just reviewed a wallet two weeks ago, the Gun Deck, which I also liked quite a bit as well. Check that video out if you haven't already. But this one, this might be the one. This might be the wallet that completely supplants my Saddleback. Now I don't know where it is. Because every other wallet I've reviewed, I've liked them and some of them I've liked a lot. And I've always gone back though to the Saddleback and I'll use some of the other ones I rotate in and out, but for the most part, I still would always prefer this. But uh, I don't know, man. I've been carrying this around for a good week now. And even though it's slightly bigger, it's hard to show the footprint, but it's just a slightly bigger footprint than the Saddleback. And when fully loaded up, it's maybe just a trifle thicker, but ergonomically, I don't know. It's a real winner. And I think you guys should check out the video. This will post on Wednesday or Thursday of this week. Keep an eye on your feed. Make sure you're subscribed and make sure you have noted on your subscriptions to my channel. There's a little icon that you can click that says that you would like notifications when a new video posts. So this will be coming up this week. As far as the Stuff and Things Plays channel goes, um, I'm still posting at least five, sometimes six Zelda Breath of the Wild videos on the Stuff and Things Plays channel. I may do some more Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Uh, some people have requested more of those videos. We shall see. Speaking of the Switch though, I've got it here in my wondrous Waterfield Switch case. Funny little side note, I was watching, uh, what was it, Kind of Funny? There, it was a, it's like a video game, uh, I don't know, pop culture channel. And one of the guys on there, I guess really likes these Waterfield cases and he was complaining that he couldn't get one. And I just found it amusing that they sent one to me for review, like me, um, but he couldn't get one and they have, you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers. So I thought that was fun. Uh, if you haven't watched the review of this case already, check it out. It's, it's an amazing case. I love it a lot. But I had my Switch out the other day, yoink, and I was hanging out with some friends at a bar and uh, I busted it out and we had a very, I guess, Nintendo Switch commercial moment where Hey, we're cool people. We're all hanging out together. And look, hey, I've got a switch. And I set it up on the table and uh, let my friends sort of have at it. Broke off controller, one controller each, handed them out. It was pretty fun. It was a very, it was almost too perfect and pat. Like it worked exactly the way the advertisement and the marketing tries to make it seem like it's going to work. Maybe I'll roll in some video right here. Yeah, I'm gonna try to jump and do it. 
Yeah, so that was a good time. Um, in other news, there has been some rumbling now that the Trump administration is... Uh, I haven't been able to find, as of the recording of this video, I haven't done as much research as I should have. Um, I haven't found the exact details on this, but it seems as though the Trump, Trump administration has at least delayed the deeming regulations for the FDA, which were going to be a big, a big deal for the pipe tobacco market, for the pipe tobacco hobby, um, basically making it impossible to put out new blends for smaller blenders, making it exorbitantly expensive to have new blends um, approved by the FDA, and making anything made after 2007 or anything brought to the market in the U.S. after 2007, 2007 subject to these new deeming regulations. It seems like those are being pushed back. Maybe they'll be wiped out entirely. And some people are saying, oh, this is good news for the Dunhill line. I'm still not sure about that because the more I see about Dunhill tobaccos being discontinued, the more it seems like maybe British American tobacco just wants to do that for the hell of it. <laughs> like maybe it has nothing to do with the deeming regulations. That probably maybe help their decision along a little bit, but it just seems like they just want to divest themselves of it. They don't want to bother. They still want to do the Dunhill cigarettes um, and all their other cigarettes, obviously, but I think that those are just way more profitable than pipe tobacco. And for their business model, for as big as they are, maybe it's not worth it to them to produce any pipe tobacco blends, but we'll see. So there's still, it, even if British American Tobacco decides for sure that they're not going to continue making Dunhill, and it's supposedly gonna go on for another year or so. Regardless, um, if these deeming regulations aren't strictly enforced or are just gotten rid of entirely, then it is way more possible for another company to maybe license the Dunhill bland, bl blends, or at least for Scandinavian Tobacco Group to release new blends that are the same as the Dunhill blends, but maybe under a different name and marquee. So there is hope, things are looking a little brighter in that regard, but I'm still on my quest, just in case, to find a replacement for Elizabethan. The next tobacco that will be in that series is GLP's Telegraph Hill, shown here. Now, this review will not be coming this coming week, it will be the week after, but I thought it was kind of fun. We did our little uh, first impressions video of Cornell and Deal Bayou Morning, so I thought why not crack this tin open on the Sunday smoke, load a pipe, and see what I think. So we're popping the little Pringles top here. Let me get out the insert, clean off the tabaco, and have a little sniff. Now there's a big piece of Perique right there. If I can grasp it. Perique. Okay, let me smell this. Mmm. Hmm. Ha. Ah. I think I inhaled some. Um, I'm getting getting almost a barbecue-y kind of smell. Not that McClellan sort of ketchup-y barbecue-y smell, but that's interesting. Sort of like, I, I want to say hickory smoke, but it's not really. But yeah, sort of barbecue. I keep, ugh, it's going up my nose. Uh, peppery, there's perique in there. Not getting a lot of raisin that you would normally get from a uh, vapor blend but kind of a savory, barbecue-y, kind of mouth-watering flavor, aroma. Hey, it's been too long. It's the train, everybody. There it goes. Actually, it hasn't been very long at all. I just usually edit it out. But while I just have my nose shoved in this tin of tobacco, it might as well make as much noise as it wants. All right, I'm gonna take this opportunity to load my pipe. We'll be right back. All right, the train is mostly gone. I can still hear it blowing its whistle in the distance, but uh, I figured we might as well read the Telegraph Hill tin information on, you know, the GLP's blends always have kind of wordy, kind of verbose descriptions on the tin. So let's go here. It's having trouble reading this font though. Let me see. <clears throat> A sturdy foundation of Virginia tobaccos, each chosen for its particular character is enhanced with fine flakes of Perique for a refined smoking experience. Telegraph Hill is rich 
and flavorful, with a satisfying lingering finish. Each sip builds upon the last, creating a marvelous edifice of taste and aroma. You won't worry about earthquakes if your pipe is filled with this wonderful blend. All right then, uh, let me light it up. See what we've got here. Hmm. Hold on. So far, it's not a flavor explosion. Getting a little bread, a little grass, more like that nice moldering hayloft kind of grassy smell, smell or taste, whatever, one of those. Uh, but more on kind of the bready end of the spectrum. Not super spicy so far. With the perique in sort of rubbed out flake form, um, it's more possible that you'll get sort of concentrated pieces of perique within the blend, so I just may not be hitting one of those yet. Hmm, so far so good though. There's a little bit of a piquant aftertaste a bit. But uh, yeah, I think this is worth, well, obviously I'm going to keep smoking it because I'm going to review it, but sometimes you initially smoke a blend and you're like, eh, I don't know about that. And very rarely are you just completely wowed on the first smoke. It usually takes a few bowls for the flavors to sort of settle in and for your mind to tease out the different uh, textures of this tobacco or any tobacco. But a promising start. It seems well balanced. It seems kind of nuanced, sort of subtle. We'll have to see. Yeah, so stay tuned in the future for the review of Telegraph Hill by GLPs. And after this, we're going to shy away from the vapor blends a little bit. I know we've been very vapor blend heavy um, going along with that series, trying to find a replacement for Elizabethan. So maybe we'll try to take a left turn or something, do something quite a bit different than a vapor. Uh, I haven't done an English mixture in quite a while, it seems like, if I think back. So maybe we'll do something with some Latakia in it. I don't know. We'll figure that out. Um, aside from that, I was going to give you a recommendation, oh, a Netflix picks. I was watching, a, I don't know if it's a series, but there have been several documentaries by a Scottish wildlife cameraman named Gordon Buchanan. And while they're not amazing, they are, that's a great great uh, endorsement there they're not amazing he he does a series there's one i think the first one he did was called uh the grizzly or no the black bear family and me he does a snow wolf family and me and they're a little bit not cheesy necessarily but the, the whole conceit is that he will go out and spend a, a bunch of time with like in the snow wolf family he went to the arctic and he camped out with some snow wolves for a long time and his whole thing is like well, maybe they'll accept me into their family. And he's all into that. Um, but it, they're interesting. The different series are, or the different documentaries are inter interesting in that they show some behaviors that you may not have seen very often in wildlife videos or wildlife documentaries if you're into wildlife documentaries. Some pretty interesting behaviors, some uh, maybe some views of these animals and their family lives that you may not have seen before. So they're worth watching, and, and they do the thing that pretty much every wildlife documentary seems to do now, where they sort of maybe pad the drama a little bit more. They uh, purposefully interpret things in certain ways so as to make it appear more dramatic. But if you can get past that and get past the fact that he sort of plays things up a little bit, they're worth watching. There's several uh, different documentaries on Netflix. Uh, just look for Gordon Buchanan, search for him, and you should find those. So that's my Netflix picks for this week. Um, I guess that's it for this week's Sunday Smoke. I don't want to go too long. I've got some editing to do, other things as well. But as far as I'm going, I'm feeling a lot better health-wise. So thank you guys all for, you know, expressing your well witches, witches, your well witches, your well wishes in videos past. The sciatica is pretty much completely gone. Um, a little twinge here and there, but not bad. So, uh, knock on plastic. That's going to continue. I hope everything is going well for you, wherever you are. Thank you so much for watching this week's edition of Sunday Smoke. I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stephen Things on a pleasant Sunday smoke. I'll see you later.